Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello and welcome back to the channel where you rejoin me today at Topaz Detailing. Now the weather outside is frightful today. Yes, I had to get that line in. We're going to be going in though where there is a lot to do. The GTR Pro is nearly finished with the full coverage PPF. We have to decide though about the stripes on it. My Senna is now downstairs getting PPF installed as well and I've also got something cool to show you to do with this new cover for the Ford GT and how we're going to do the colours. Let's get straight in though. It is wet and horrible out here and go see how everything is going. Straight away then to come and take a look at the Senna. Have a quick update about this and you might be able to hear some noises in the background that you will see in just a second. Now some of the parts have been installed, for example this front piece which is actually just what you see from here to the edge and that whole panel weighs about 600 grams. That's basically been done, still needs to be finished but um, it's getting, well it's getting a little bit louder in here because bursting in right now is the Senna GTR. We're going to have my Senna, the road going Senna, next to the racetrack version, the track toy in the form of the Senna GTR. The second actually Senna GTR has been through here at Topaz. That thing dials this up to a completely different level. Listen to it as well. So much more aggressive and grumblier. It's coming back onto the lift area. Side by side, Senna and Senna GTR. Epic, 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 epic. Now there are a few panels that still need to be done, of course. This whole side is going to be done, so the door will consist of a number of different parts, as will this front piece, the skirts you have, this whole rear section, which consists of the inside and the outside, which of course needs to be templated, and obviously the rear spoiler. Now this is going to be, well, a bit of a challenge to do all of it. The original end plate actually on this side, I think is probably still done, he says. Yeah, I can just feel the protection film that's been installed on there. You can't see. That's the whole beauty of this. You can't tell it's there. And there will be one or two other kind of updates done to some of the existing parts as well, just to completely refresh and make sure the whole car is looking perfect. Now I think this, yeah, that piece was removed, so some of the gloss black will need to be done as well. But basically, it isn't, isn't going to be too big a job, and we might be able to see some of that later on, to see the PPF being put into place and being fully installed. But just while we're here, check out this insane machine. The McLaren Senna GTR, they are only making 75 units in total. It shares the 4 litre twin turbo V8, but makes 820 horsepower. At the moment, this car doesn't have those end plates installed, which are one of the most kind of overwhelming components almost. And in fact, I think they're currently on the trestle table just over here. You can see quite how special those are with the large pieces of carbon fiber. But this, this is, this is quite a, menacing machine even lower to the ground. Let's just come round to the front even lower to the ground than the road going Senna with that <laughs> big flat tray at the front for the uh, splitter. Wow, looking very cool. Now onto the GTR Pro which is almost complete but sitting in this lineup alongside the number 9 edition Continental GT and also the Lamborghini Veneno Roadster but I think this is the first time on camera we have seen my new car with the engine bay open front, like the Senna actually, you have a 4 litre twin turbo V8, a very different one, and in the case of the engines from AMG, you have the plaque, the one man, one engine, and in this case my engine was assembled by Brian Belrig at the factory in a falter back in Germany, but the body panels are now just about all completely covered, a few extra details which are quite cool as well, to show you here for example, the kick plates, the side sills that you have here, these are covered as well, templated to allow the shape you have around and of course the AMG logo, but all of those kind of things, all extra details. Details. Of course, the whole of the exterior, the carbon parts of the diffuser, the rear spoiler, all of these, even these areas, everything fully protected with paint protection film. It will lead us on though to talking about the stripes. Now, of course, the stripe came up the bonnet, it goes over the roof, it goes towards the back, it doesn't go on the wing. It did have some details here, and of course, it had the stripes, the main stripes along the side as well. But we have had an idea. So, we do actually have a set of the satin grey replacement, direct replacement stripes to go over the top. But there's something that's a little bit secretive, which has a very cool effect, which we might be able to try out. I need to show you what that is in just a moment. And that, you might be able to spot right behind me, is what we have here. Now this is going to be something for the future. It is not vinyl, and it's gonna have a paint-like effect. And we're gonna try and take some templates and then plot them out to make this on the car, using the plotter and the machine that is used, of course, for the paint protection film, the PPF, to make all of these templates that go onto the cars anyway. And you can see the different materials, the different widths, the different sizes. But I am in 
intrigued to see what this is going to be like as a piano black finish for the stripes on the GTR Pro. Which if I go back to the car, you will see matches with the wing, with the door mirrors. So it should look pretty cool along with the grayscale theme of the car. So yeah. That, well, let's see. Which, as you can see, is going to match perfectly to these. The gloss black of the door mirrors and also to the rear wing is almost the exact same colour as the piano black material that we're going to be trying out this with. Now, the car is very much grayscale. You've got the Designio diamond white paintwork. Even the carbon fibre of the roof has the effect of being dark grey. You will actually get the contrast of the black stripes over that as well. Um, what else do we have? Well, a few more carbon areas, the titanium of the wheels. It's all that theme. So this should work pretty well. I'm intrigued to see how it's going to come out. That won't be today because it will take some time of course to have it all finished and to have all the parts done but we'll give it a go and we will see the exact result upstairs in the office and we are rejoined by Nabil yes and you've brought the paint samples for the car cover I have indeed now yesterday we talked about this Topaz are working with Goodwill to be the UK reseller of their new covers and we need exactly. a cover for the Ford GT yes. now to do the colors exactly I either needed to bring the car or to bring the yeah. Color samples. The car wasn't going to happen. No, not in today's weather. It is atrocious outside. It is horrible. So what I brought instead was this, which many of you won't have seen because I think I last showed this on the channel about six months before I actually got the car. But these are sent out to all for GT customers. It's the GT Design Spec Carbon Fiber Order Options Box, racing latch like on the race cars, and inside you have all of these different spec options. So awesome. Perfectly done. And in here, for example, look at this. All the different colors you could have. So wheels. Got, yeah, the wheels. Literally, look, you've got multiple different wheel options underneath as well. Same. You can take off the calipers and change them around. You can build your spec. So we have I had these made afterwards, but the Allen Man gold stripes over the liquid red. We've also got my interior here from ADP. That's cool with the gold paddles, remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the cross stitch and the as well. As well, yeah, exactly. But what we need to do is basically take the color codes for liquid red and for man gold. So we can match the actual fabric. Yeah. To match on the fabric, to match and make the, the car covers. Exactly. So how are we going to do that? Using this little gizmo. Exactly. So I've got this little spectrum photometer, a tiny little one, and I am going to scan. It's that easy. You just kind of... It literally scan it and that gives you all of the colors that you need, all the, uh -huh. all the codes that you need. So technically, you can store a database of all of these. And these, um, one of the cool things about this is these actually unclip so you can take off the stripes and try them on different colors so when you're building up your spec of your Ford GT you get to play around with all of this there we go so if we just take this little one do the liquid red put it over here then no I way. will put that on and what we'll do don't look at the actual color itself yeah. but what we will do is going to give me there we go wow the RGB number <laughs> <laughs> the CMYK number, the hex number, everything. So and Goodwill could then that. make the cover. Exactly. Give that you, is give you a 99% match, which is cool. Wow, that's going to be cool. And also, I'm going to point out this. Normally, when you take delivery of your car, you get, well, you do get something. I do have a chassis plaque that you stick here on your box, but I have failed to ever stick it on. So I need to go and do that. To put that on. Yeah, but this is going to be really, really cool. I'm very excited about it. And uh, I guess it's nice to show this kind of thing again, memorabilia that I love. And I know looking around your office that you love this kind of stuff as well. Just a little bit. Yeah, things to keep forever. That will be in the new man cave when it happens. But now we've got the color code, so those can go to Goodwill yeah. and we can work on what comes next with that. Exactly, and that'll give us some new ones of these, so something a bit closer. Perfect. To, to what the actual car looks like, so. Wonderful. Back down with the Senna. This piece has just been installed, but it is time now to do the majority of the door, which of course is pretty unusual given that it has the glass panel um, that you can see out from inside. But what's interesting as well about the repair is that I didn't realize before that the cerulean blue part and the blue tinted carbon part are actually the same piece. That's a masked paint line on the same piece of carbon. It's not a separate side skirt, but this whole door, if you can see with the contours and the shapes and the way it tucks inside, is not going to be the easiest, but let's follow some of the process to see how that gets installed. The first step of this is to make sure the panel is cleaned. Of course you need to make sure there's no dirt or anything that's left on it that will risk getting caught underneath the paint protection film when it's actually applied. The last thing you could want to ever have with this if for example you had a speck of dust is that you would then see the ripple in the film over the top so the panel gets a complete wipe down. Of course the car had a proper wash before it came inside the workshop in the first place but when this is done then you can start using the other solutions, the slip solution and then the fix solution to get the PPF in place. Now comes the time to prepare it all. So there was one round of slip solution which was then squeegeed off to remove any fibers off the surface. The next round of slip solution is done, of course, as you would expect to be able to slide around the back rolled PPF into place. And the interesting thing about doing this now is that unlike on the GTR Pro, you couldn't really see it. The clear film over the white car wasn't quite so visible. On the Cerulean Blue, a good old MSO Cerulean Blue, it is gonna stand out substantially more. Now these templates are all completely pre-cut and prepared. As you can imagine, they're all done, they're worked on 
for the Senna's and the team here actually working between the Senna and the Senna GTR have done a lot of them now. I would guess, off the top of my head, probably about 100 Senna's have been through these doors. So they know exactly what they're doing very efficiently with the various parts. But this is one of the most, I think, challenging shapes because it's kind of tucked in, it's awkward, it's difficult. It is basically designed to make life as hard as possible, but all in the interests of aerodynamics. So that gets basically held loosely in place. Remember, it will all be refined, it will be moved around, and eventually you will have no idea it's even on there. Remember, that panel has PPF, that panel has PPF, the mirror doesn't yet, this does. You can't see it, you can't tell whether it does or not. But the back rolling technique then, around the window, having to be attached at the top and the bottom, just to make life even more difficult. Got some slip solution again to help maneuver it all around. I find this whole process pretty mesmerizing and I'm sure many of you do as well. I know we have seen it in various iterations before, even with this car when it was done back originally, but still knowing that it's you know being applied now and ultimately you're not going to be able to see it, but this adds a layer of protection to stop from light damage. Of course it will never stop aggressive damage towards the car, but it will stop stone chips around the front. It will stop um, if you're parked and some tree sap falls on the car or anything like that. Uh, or maybe the lightest of scratches from people or you know if somebody brushes past and hits their watch against it or something it will protect from those kind of things that might happen at car events so overall a very very valuable thing to keep your car looking perfect and you can see that this is now going to start the process to adjust it all. One other thing that's important is to have slip solution on the top side of the film as well so that it doesn't get any scratch marks from the squeegees so it can move around pretty easily so it's all being wetted down with the slip solution all over. Now comes the first bit of fix solution, which will basically just hold that first corner in place. So it gets positioned precisely. This is where it then gets squeegeed out and the fix solution does its magical thing to hold it completely in place. And from there, it can basically be worked out or worked or held a few other pinch points that have all been worked in advance. But effectively, you can start to see how it's gonna disappear. And this is again, <laughs> pretty mesmerizing bit when it's basically smoothened and you lose all the bubbles and all the water and it becomes natural and flat to the paint. Exactly like that. Now that most of the top section is done, it's onto this lower area, of course, not helped by the contours and shapes of the car, this all being one carbon piece. In fact, obviously, the entire bodywork of the McLaren Senna is made from carbon fiber. But you've got a lot of these big switchbacks and curves to have to work with the material, which obviously is limited in the sense of how much it can stretch and how much it can be moved around, which is why you have these templates. But you can see how it's disappearing into the bodywork. The edges will then be folded and tidied later on so that you won't ever see them because of the way they wrap around just in there. Looks a little bit fiddly and awkward, to be completely honest. This is definitely where having a car with such complicated aero makes life a little bit difficult, but you can see the way the film sits down, all the bubbles are removed as it squeegeed around. Just keeping out of the way as much as possible. We see that final piece going down some fixed solution there to hold it. Hold it in place, line up the corner. Actually amazing how that works, but an amazing amount of skill as well to do it accurately. I don't think I'd be patient enough for, for all of this. But just like that, it's more or less going to be finished. In terms of the first layer of the outer panels of the door, just working it back towards the uh, that pinch point that it's got at the end. Have some fix to make sure it holds down. You have to be careful with where the fix goes. But obviously use it in the places where it's most important to actually hold it. Like that. Magic. Given that it's not every day you have both the Senna and the Senna GTR side by side, you can see a little bit of the differences here between them. Look at the seats in the GTR, the way they have the wraparound headrest. Look at the steering wheel and the dashboard as well. And instead of the infotainment, it has the control panel race car style in the middle, even though this is, well, pretty much race car in its own right. Based on the same tub, you can see that from the door sills, the same obviously bodywork to the most part, but quite a few differences as well between them. For example, how far back the wing is. You can see on my car, the wing sits basically because the back edge of it has to be in front uh, of the rear of the car whereas in this case it can hang out a decent chunk out over the back but yeah not every day you have a Senna and a Senna GTR both being worked on this car having the PPF installed as well I couldn't tell you which panels have already been done and which haven't but super super cool for my car to be in such epic company to have this work done and I'm sure some of you have noticed lift system is up it helps to do the work lift system up because it obviously keeps it just a touch higher from the ground which makes it easier to get to the fiddly parts and also just makes everything a touch more accessible so that's why it sits lift up um, for the most part while this is being done <laughs> that is big
being moved and it is very, very loud. So cool though. Look at that. How much the tyre is up in the arc. That's going to be repositioned quickly. While this has now been finished. In fact, just to come and show you very quickly around here. You can see how this has now mostly been put flush to the paintwork. That's exactly how it proceeds, working backwards until all is done. And it won't be too long until it's ready. Wow, this thing is so cool. It makes mine look a bit pedestrian, to be honest. Meanwhile, good progress has also been made with the GTR Pro. This is now not too far from being completed. Most of the PPF installed. Of course, it needs the louvers, it needs the stripes. It also needs the interior to be fully cleaned up. But hopefully we'll be able to cover some of that if I come back tomorrow, the finishing stages. And fingers crossed, if the weather is nice, when it's all finished, we can take it out for the first drive as well. I can't wait to drive this car. Of course, at this moment in time, I still have not even sat in the GTR. Pro. That sounds crazy, but that is currently the case. Also, the Senna, when it's finished here at Topaz, maybe tomorrow as well, will be going over to the McLaren factory to have its final quality control check, its shakedown to be factory approved effectively to make sure everything is agreed and signed off as per a new car before I will take possession of it in around about a week or so, I think, from now. So I'm pretty excited about that. I think that's needless to say, really. Let's just hope, though, that tomorrow's weather is going to be better so that I can take this out for a first drive, and you will see that right here on the channel. For now, Although a big thanks to the team here at Topaz, as always, for letting me film and see a bit of what's going on. I hope they don't mind too much when I'm filming some of these bits. And thank you to you guys as well, of course, for watching. I appreciate your support as always. That is it for this time, though. How epic with the Senna and with the Senna GTR. I will see you again very soon. Cheers.